All right, today is the day. And one of the things that people question about in my building this project is my choice in engines. Why did I choose the Toyota 1JZ? Well, I thought instead of me just sitting here rambling on about it, I would resurrect a bunch of old footage I shot of rebuilding the engine. And while that was running, I could go ahead and explain my thoughts on the idea of why I chose that engine. So anyway, let's go take a look at it. We can discuss it then. Now, I film segments on my rebuild, kind of like I film everything that you, something you just do when you're on YouTube, but never planned on editing it into any kind of tutorial. Heaven knows there's enough tutorials out there on YouTube. And I particularly wouldn't trust any of them. In fact, you probably shouldn't even trust me. So what you should do if you're interested in uh, rebuilding and training and tutorials and that, you should probably go to Horsepower Academy. Um, I think you can search them as horsepoweracademy.com or they're on YouTube as Horsepower Academy. But they have some great uh, tuning engine rebuilding courses. They even have a course specifically based on the Jay-Z engine platform. Now, they don't sponsor me or my channel, but I do have their courses, which are great. And you can. they also have great customer service and a good community built around of what they do. So there you go. We'll count that as our first reason or why I'm using the 1JZ. Number one, seems like the professional people find it important enough to create training courses around it and share information about it. Now for our number two reason, I think the Jay-Z platform is popular enough that aftermarket parts are pretty easily available. It's so popular, in fact, that you can find performance parts designed for the platform to go from the upper 200 horsepower that came out with in stock form to over 1,000 horsepower or even if you want to go to get a billet machine block, you can push it to 2,000 horsepower and above. Well, lots of people and businesses support the one Jay-Z community, so that's a good reason. Number three, getting into a Jay-Z engine is pretty fairly expense, inexpensive. Low mileage engines, they're imported from Japan all the time, and regularly you can get one for under $2,000. I paid about $1,200 for mine about two years ago. After tearing it down, I found that indeed the low mileage claims they make, or at least were in my part, were pretty correct as all the clearances were pretty close to exactly what they should have been if they left Toyota. I'm very little wear. As a little out of bonus, when you buy one of these JDM imported engines, you get all the little extras, the hardware that came on the engine. That came with transmission, wiring harness, and the ECUs and all that kind of stuff. Everything you need if you were just throwing it into another car as a swap. So the number four is the culture. Now there's a lot of people interested in the Jay-Z family of engines and it's recognized wherever you go. So when you have a supercar with a mid-engine Jay-Z, at least you have some clout with the drifters in the Asian street racing cloud. Reason number five is balance. Now the inline six configuration is inherently well balanced by design. And in my case, as I'm running the 1JZ version of that same engine, the 1JZ has a little lower engine displacement at 2.5 liters compared to the 3 liters of the 2JZ, but has less displacement because it uses a shorter stroke on the light. So what does this mean? Well, it means that the balance and the short stroke um, give me the ability to reach higher revs, something that I'll need if I think I'm really designing a car that can go 200 miles an hour. And another thing, higher revving and six cylinders, they just sound better, at least in my humble opinion. Reason number six is the fitment. Now I thought this was a consideration, but when you hang all that stuff on the sides of a straight six engine, it takes up about as much room as any V configured engine. So it didn't end up being much of a consideration at all, but Luckily, I have lots of room in back there in my engine bay, so I could have fit just about anything in there I wanted to. I guess one of the benefits is that at least I don't have to deal with exhaust coming out one side of the engine. Now, reason number seven. You now, all the 1JZ engine was in production for quite a while ago. It came with some important technologies. The 1JZ variant... I'm running came equipped with variable valve timing, four valves per cylinder, fly-by-wire throttle, knock sensing, oil squirters under the cylinders, and a few other modern technologies. Maybe this is actually just one more reason of number three is the cost. 
But you get lots of technology kind of from an old school priced engine. I guess the last reason I picked the 1JZ is that it's different, at least in the mid-engine configuration. Not just a lot of mid-engine supercars running straight six engines in them. And I like different. Well, there you have it. All the reasons I'm running the 1JZ. If you're a Jay-Z fan, maybe you've got some of the other reasons of your own that you love the platform. If you do, throw it down in the comments. I'd love to discuss it with you. Well, it looks like we've got a little more time on the engine rebuilding, so maybe I should just share with you how I plan on pushing this 1JZ to 200 mile an hour club. To do so, I've figured that I need somewhere just shy of about 600 horsepower. And this isn't something terribly difficult to do with the Jay-Z. It seems like there's people able to achieve that pretty regularly. But here's what I'm planning on doing. First off, rather than replace the, the Jay-Z's CT50B turbo with something bigger, which is typically what people do, I've simply added a second 15B turbocharger. Now, rather than spinning a large impeller, I get to work with two smaller impellers. Easier to spin up smaller impellers. Now you might say, but you've reduced the volume through the turbo by halving or splitting the manifold. And this would be true if we weren't increasing the flow on the intake side so much. And speaking of that, on the intake side, I've ported the heads in the manifold, gone to a 90 millimeter throttle, replaced the injectors with much higher flowing models, gone to a bigger fuel pump, added a bigger and better flowing intercooler and intake. I'll be jacking up the boost and have opened up the exhaust. I'll also be running the MS3X ECU and I hope I can learn to tune the thing and get all these adjustments to do what they're supposed to do. Well, that's about it. I guess high energy ignition coils and some bottom end things like stud kits and such could have been mentioned. It looks like our engine rebuilding is just about over. So like I said, if you're a fan of the 1JZ, I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you're not a fan, I probably don't want to hear your thoughts. Okay, but I will listen to your thoughts anyway as well. So go ahead and put them in the comments. Until then, have a great day. And again, thanks for stopping by. Hope we see you again.